So I think we'll go ahead and get started because I said some of this is uh, known to all of you, but I wanted to start by saying thank you for being here, number one, and for taking the time to be with us. I think this is uh, something I enjoy doing a lot is sharing what I learned and what I'd like to learn about with all of you. I think I want to remind everybody, I was just going to do some advertising for the Woodlands Green <clears throat> for uh, Sunday, I think, February the 26th. Wendy's online, but I want to talk about Adopt a Path from noon until 2 at Shadow Bend Park, 40. For no 49.95 Lake Willens Drive, but uh, Wendy will be there and hopefully a bunch of volunteers. We go and meet there on the Sunday afternoon, and uh, I like it a lot because it's the only time I get to have donuts. And it's Ooh, I something better make sure she brings donuts, huh, Paul? And Minnick <laughs> and her family have taken over, so they'll be hosting their first one. Yeah, I heard, and I mean, make sure I'm sure Wendy let them know that. Donuts will be expected. <laughs> okay. I'll help, I'll help pay for them. But I think it's a nice time to get together, have coffee, donuts, a snack, orange juice, and whatever, and then go out into the park and, and try to collect all the items we can. And it uh, it's a fun time. It also does really good for the park. It's a, one of the cleaner parks I've seen. Also want to talk about if you can't make that, I'd like to see you at the board meeting. We'll be on Zoom, the, the monthly board meeting on Thursday, March the 2nd at 5 p.m. Some of it will be business, but there's always something we can learn about what's going on, who's doing what, and what other opportunities you might have. And then just bottom line, go to woodlandsgreen.org and, and see what volunteer activities are available. I said, there's always something for somebody, something for everybody. Um, I think that's all I have on that, just to remind you of those things and and to, again, tell you that I appreciate you coming to, to join us. So for the, the lecture, um, AMI, Advanced Metering Infrastructure, I think, John, I'm correct that we're now, we, the muds that make up Woodlands water are at a hundred percent converted to, to AMI. Right. And, um, so that's one reason I wanted to do it. I know that the Woodlands water is doing a great job of pushing this uh, feature and what we're talking about tonight, but I also wanted to try to make it available to others that may not even be in the Woodlands Water Service area. But if you learn about what they can do <clears throat> and how valuable a tool they may be, then you might just push your water supplier to doing the same thing. Uh, I think it's just, like I said, it's a, a great conservation tool. So I'll let John Geiger talk about that. But John is the, is the water awareness and the public education coordinator for the Woodlands Water. I'm not sure you are approaching a year yet, John, but um, maybe more. But prior to working at the Woodlands Water, he was with the Woodlands Township Environmental Services Department. And I think been doing that almost, I guess it's been here 10 years almost. But uh, well, all of it been about the environment and sustainability, and and uh, I'm glad he's at the Woodlands Water Agency because we want to continue to push one of my passions, which is water conservation and environmental use of water. So I would like you to go ahead and start. I said again, remind you that if you have questions or comments or a story to tell, just put it in the chat. I'll try to pay attention to that. And then uh, we'll let John finish up and then we'll try to, to go from there to get everybody's comments and questions addressed. Thank you, John, go ahead. Thank you, Paul, good to see everybody. Uh, really appreciate this opportunity to be with you, uh, this opportunity to push water smart, as Paul said, um, because it is a powerful tool. 
Um, as Paul mentioned, my title is Water Awareness and Public Education Coordinator for the Woodlands Water Agency. That's a mouthful. What that means, though, is, is I work with Woodlands Water to help them meet one of our primary objectives, which is keeping customers well informed, right? Who we are, what we do, what's the latest information on operations, rates, service interruptions, anything and everything that's going to affect our customers. We want them to be aware of. And we do a lot of conservation education. So that means we're making folks aware of all of our programs and services, and we have a bunch uh, that help reduce water waste. I'm really excited to talk about Water Smart. Um, and um, it, it, it is truly one of the best tools we have from both an agency standpoint and a customer standpoint to reduce water waste. Uh, it's got some awesome customer benefits beyond that as well. Um, and I want to say that if you're already with, familiar with Water Smart, if you're already using it, I really do think you're going to get a lot out of tonight's talk because um, I know that every time I dig into it, I seem to find a new, interesting, useful angle to learning about my water use. Hopefully you will too. I'm also going to spend the first 15, 20 minutes giving some background, um, talking about what's happening with water in our area, including a lot of the new pressures and demands being placed on our resources as our region booms in population and development. And all of that really underscoring the need for better conservation tools like WaterSmart. Uh, you'll see in the chat box that I put a number of links that will back up a lot of the information we talked about tonight, some extensions if you guys want to read further. Uh, so look for that. You can also, of course, email me at any point for, uh, for additional information uh, on anything water related, anything to talk about tonight or, or other topics. Please, please reach out. Um, I'm also going to spend a few minutes at the end uh, to talk about some other programs and services that Woodlands Water has for you beyond Water Smart that can help you save water, save money, save headaches. If you're not familiar with Water Smart, I really think you're going to be impressed. Um, I, I am in, in how they have really struck a great middle ground between putting a lot of great, useful, practical data in your lap. And uh, at the same time, being very intuitive, being very easy to navigate, even if you're not the most tech savvy person in the world. All right, so get us started here. I've got a 60 second primer. Uh, it's a bit commercially, you'll have to forgive me, but it does give a nice encapsulation of what WaterSmart offers. Have you ever wondered how you can save money on your water bill, identify and resolve leaks, and protect your property from potentially costly water damage? Do you have a good handle on your water consumption? Do you know how much you use each month, where it goes, and what it costs? What if your water utility could offer specific suggestions on ways you can save money each month on your bill and exactly where you use water? What if you could choose to be alerted when your water use was really high, or if you had an upcoming payment due? Well, now you can have all that and more. Your utility has partnered with WaterSmart software to provide you with a customer water portal in which you can view your usage history, access your bill, get money-saving recommendations, sign up for usage and payment alerts, and much more. To register for free, just go to your utility's website and look for the WaterSmart link. All you need is your account ID and zip code, and you'll be well on your way to becoming more WaterSmart. WaterSmart. Intelligence beyond the meter. All right. <clears throat> so before we dig into Water Smart in, in earnest, uh, I do want to give you some background on our local water management, uh, what's happening in our area, uh, and some context for why conservation tools like Water Smart are so critical. And, and I think the first stop is to make sure that everyone is clear on exactly who Woodlands Water is and what we do. I know that there's multiple agencies that manage water in our area, and a lot of folks get confused where those various roles start and end. So Woodlands Water, I like to say, ultimately, we're, we're really about maintaining our quality of life here in Woodlands, right? Because without a reliable supply of affordable and high quality water, we really don't have a quality of life. And, and that's where the, you know, from an economic standpoint, a health standpoint, recreational or environmental. And, and we're quite fortunate here in the Woodlands that we do have a, a high-end system in terms of water supply, drainage, and wastewater treatment 
Um, our system's highly reliable. Uh, if you think about it, we, we haven't had a service interruption knock on wood through our last four big storm events. Um, that's something that other communities, uh, many of them just couldn't avoid. Um, we've been fortunate in that regard. Um, and we have excellent water quality, we really do. And so, so again, I think we're very fortunate uh, to have the system that we have in this community. So that's my little commercial <laughs> for Woodlands Water. Uh, now let's get into a little bit more detail about exactly what we do and, and how that water is managed here in the Woodlands. So the first thing, again, to know is that there are multiple entities involved in delivering and treating your water, um, managing your storm drainage, and, and understanding those roles um, can be a little confusing. Uh, hopefully, I can add some clarity here tonight. Let's start with the MUDs. So MUDs are political subdivisions of the state. So they set policy, and then they assess fees and taxes that then fund water, sewer, and drainage services within their boundaries. MUDs are elected boards. You vote on them every two years, or at least part of the board, every two years. Uh, but those five-person boards, that's that's where their personnel starts or starts and ends, right? So they, they're limited to just those five elected individuals. They don't have support staff, you know, of administration or technicians uh, and so forth. But that's where Woodlands Water comes in. So we are the managing agency for the 10 MUDs in the woodlands that lie within Montgomery County. So, so there's actually 11 MUDs total that comprise the woodlands, but one of those, 386, is in Creekside. That, of course, is Harris County, and so not under our auspices, uh, though we do coordinate on projects from time to time. So as the managing agency for the MUDs, we are, in essence, their boots on the ground. Right, so we provide all the necessary administrative functions like billing and tax collection. Uh, we coordinate budgeting and planning efforts, and we, of course, communicate with the public like we're doing tonight. Um, we have staff and contractors that maintain our distribution lines, our wastewater collection lines, and much of our stormwater drainage system. And then the third stool, or third leg in this stool, rather, is the San Jacinto River Authority. So SGRA is also another political subdivision of the state, but they're charged with serving and protecting the water resources of the San Jacinto River Basin. We are part of that here in Montgomery, Montgomery County. Um, <clears throat> one of the main reasons that SGRA exists, like all river authorities in Texas, is to work with local entities like Woodlands Water to plan and develop long-term water projects. And these are usually the big expensive ones projects that individual utilities like Woodlands Water uh, simply don't have the resources, financial and otherwise, to implement on their own. So uh, Woodlands Water is a retail water provider. Uh, that means we purchase our water from SGRA. Uh, that then makes them our wholesale water provider. So we are partners in the water system, very much so. Now, on the left side of this diagram, you're going to see um, where our water comes from. So SGRA sources raw water, it's called, from aquifers and from surface water from Lake Conroe. Uh, they treat that water. They store it. They own the six water towers that you see dotted around town, as well as the smooth ground storage tanks. And then they deliver that water most of the way to your home through large transmit, excuse me, transmission lines, uh, big pipes, right? Um, and then Willis Water steps in uh, as when we connect to those big pipes, those transmission lines, uh, with smaller lines, and then we bring that water the rest of the way to your home, or to your curb, rather, uh, to your meter, and then once it's past your meter, then it's all yours. Until, of course, you flush it, and then we take it back from you. So you don't see that reflected uh, on this infographic, but that is uh, a obviously critical component of our system is dealing with wastewater. Um, something you and I maybe don't often think about uh, until something bad happens and then it gets our attention pretty quickly. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, Woodlands Water takes that wastewater from your house and then we transfer it into bigger SGRA sewer trunk mains, they're called. And then they take that wastewater uh, the rest of the way to the wastewater treatment plant. There are three. 
Right? There's two big ones. Uh, one is behind Bear Branch Rec Center. The other is down off of Sawdust Road. And then the third smaller one is at Harper's Landing. So that wastewater is treated. Uh, it's then released, of course, meeting all EPA standards, but it's then released back into the environment. It goes into a neighboring creek and then on down the watershed. So let's go back to the left side of this diagram um, for a minute. And uh, I wanna talk about where water comes from in a little more detail, because uh, that is certainly a hot topic right now. And I will make the bold prediction here live that it will be for the foreseeable future. Water matters. Um, there are two options for communities like ours to get our drinking water either from the ground, aquifers, or from the surface, which is primarily reservoirs. Historically, uh, groundwater has been the go-to source for water in our region. Uh, it's the cheaper, easier option. So let's start there. Um, first, quick overview about what groundwater is. So groundwater is found in the pore spaces between soil particles in the ground. Um, and aquifer, again, is another name for these reservoirs of groundwater. Aquifer is much like a sponge will hold that water in those pore spaces. A lot of us think uh, maybe groundwater is contained in underground tanks or caverns. Uh, not true in our area, though it is true in other areas that have carbonate rock layers like limestone. Uh, but here we have aquifers that are composed of water holding sediment. And this uh, here is an overview of our regional aquifer system. Uh, if you look at that red X, uh, on the chart, that's roughly where the woodlands lies. So um, when we drill down, or I should say when SGRA drills down, because they uh, went and managed these 38 water wells here in the woodlands, they're going through into the Chico. Um, some go deeper into the Evangeline, uh, then through a clay confining layer called the Burkeville, and then some go to as deep as the Jasper, uh, we don't have any wells going into the Catahoula here, but there are some communities um, away from here that do go that deep. Uh, so what you're looking at is a cross section. If you look at that um, map down in the lower left corner, that shows you the transect. So this is running from northwest to southeast, right from Grimes County down to the coast. You can see that Chico is um, is at the surface, so it's recharging from from precipitation um, at the surface level. But you also notice that the Evangeline, Jasper, and Catahoula, they only surface up in Grimes County. So that's their, their recharge areas up there. So that's where precip precipitation will hit the ground and trickle down through the aquifer. Uh, of course, we access this groundwater with what is essentially a giant concrete straw, right? We stick that in the ground, put a pump and a screen on the end of it, and we suck that water and send it up to the waters, to the, uh, to the surface, and it's a groundwater well. Now this slide shows the current groundwater wells in Montgomery County. It's from a recent uh, HARC report called Know Your Aquifer. I highly recommend that report to you if you're at all interested in our groundwater resources uh, and the demands on those resources. A great report, chock full of awesome information and very well produced, really easy to navigate. Uh, I did put a link for that in the chat bar uh, if you want to access that. So this sea of color really demonstrates how we rely on groundwater to meet our needs, how much we rely on it. Uh, we've been relying on groundwater for almost entirely for the past 100 years. And, and it really has served us well uh, through that time. But there is a problem brewing. Um, and that's really boiled down into these two charts on the left side of this slide. So the top graph, average water depth of wells in the woodlands. You can see that levels have been dropping fairly rapidly over time. Uh, we've been pumping groundwater faster than it can recharge, which is continuing to lower our well yields. Now the graph at the bottom, shows that demand at the same time those water well levels are dropping, demand is increasing rapidly. We are going to double our demand on water in the next 25 years. We're going to triple in 50 years, all due to the, uh, the booming 
development in our region. And the problem with that, the challenge is, it, it is very well established that water um, pumped out of the ground in excess of the recharge rate has consequences. So consider that recharge of an aquifer, our aquifers comes in very slowly. So it's coming in about a 10th of an inch to a couple inches a year, depending on the aquifer. Right? We're drinking water that's thousands of years old when you pull it out of the ground. And the consequences of over pumping or pumping that groundwater faster than the aquifer can recharge, uh, one, we get increased pumping costs, right? So you're gonna need bigger motors, more electricity to get to water that's deeper down. And so wells that have been reliable for years are gonna require expensive overhauls, maybe even need to be replaced entirely with more expensive wells. You've got expensive impacts on well infrastructure and you get underground compaction of the soil. So let's drill into that, that concept, compaction and the associated S word, subsidence. So remember I said water's held in pore spaces between grains of sediment. That water provides pressure that maintains those spaces. So when you remove that water, you reduce the pressure. And what happens with that is you now are less able to bear the weight of the overlying rock that then collapses upon itself, compacting those sediments. And when that happens, you can get lowering of the land surface, or what we refer to as subsidence. Subsidence is the lowering of the surface of the land. Okay, so the land drops a couple inches, so what? Well, it, it matters. Um, it does have very real consequences. One, as we know all too well in this region, it can increase uh, frequency and severity of flooding. Two, it has major impacts on infrastructure, right? So damaging roads, bridges, homes, um, that is happening uh, in our area. So this subsidence, compaction subsidence is, is nothing new. Cities and water utilities throughout the Houston region have been dealing with this for well over half a century beyond, spending billions to, to fight the problem. And, and how they fought it is by reducing their reliance on groundwater. That's really all you can do. And, and how you do that is you develop alternate sources of water supplies, surface water, to help meet your demands. That in conservation, of course. So water costs have risen throughout the region uh, because of this, um, but it is a wise long-term financial choice to not continue to kick that, that, um, that issue down the road, right? Compounding as you go along to problems that come with it. Uh, instead, turning to surface water and not over pumping our groundwater. As our region here in, in Montgomery County again continues to grow, these issues are becoming much more front and center for us here. Uh, population development, uh, again, I said, you know, it's projected to, to double in the next uh, 20 or 25 years, or water demand at least is. And so we are facing a lot of those same groundwater challenges um, that uh, other regions have dealt with for decades. So what are we doing about it? How, how are we gonna address this issue of overpumping? Well, Woodlands Water, we've been dealing with this issue uh, from the conservation angle for, for many years. Uh, and that means a, a really robust maintenance and repair program. So we invest millions of dollars annually into MNR to address leaks, to maintain efficiency, reduce waste, uh, and maintain the reliability of the system. Uh, conservation education has and will continue to be a top priority. Um, I, I have to say that we've been highly successful in that area as a community. Since 2011, we've been able to reduce per household water use almost 40%. And that's remarkable. It really is. And, and we've gained national attention for that. Uh, my predecessor, Bob Daly, had a big hand in that for a long time. He and Woodland Water <clears throat> have been nationally recognized uh, for their conservation achievements, which is really a recognition for, for the Woodlands community. So got to stop and celebrate the victories um, as well as acknowledge the challenges. And so, so good job, Woodlands. Um, now, <clears throat> Perhaps the single biggest step in protecting our groundwater 
initiated in 2015 when Woodlands Water entered into a Regional Groundwater Reduction Plan, the GRP. We did this along with dozens of other water utilities in the region. And together, we have funded a $500 million estuary project that, that draws, treats, and supplies surface water from Lake Conroe. So this slide here, you can see some components of that facility. And then in the middle, you see a map that shows the current transmission lines. You can see that surface water is being brought all the way down uh, into the woodlands and even across 45 into Oak Ridge North areas around there. Uh, <clears throat> we have reduced groundwater pumping significantly through the GRP. Uh, in fact, as of last September, the woodlands is now on a 50-50 blend, we call it, of surface and groundwater. Half of our water is being supplied from Lake Conroe. It is working. We know it's working. So in, in the early weather starts. In the early 2010s, um uh, in my hearing. <laughs> let's see, I'm getting somebody's audio here. Okay. Okay. Um so let's see, where was I? I want to say in the early 2010s, um Prior to implementing the GRP, the rate of water level decline was accelerating in Montgomery County. Um, we began again supplementing with surface water in 2015, and those water levels have generally stopped declining. So we know it's working, we know it's addressing the issue. Um, this slide here, you can see a detail of this estuary plant. Uh, I'm not going to walk you through all that. But I do want to say that if you get a chance to tour that facility, and, and they do provide tours, take it. Uh, highly, rec highly recommend it. Uh, it's a really high-tech facility. Uh, very impressive. So uh, not an inexpensive project by any means. That's why um, all these utilities, now 149, are participating in the GRP. Um, it's benefiting us all, and, um, and we're all needed to help fund it. Um, those costs then, of course, are passed to the consumer. That's you and I. Um, and so starting in 2015, we all saw a new line item on our water bill, the SWC fee or surface water conversion fee. You can see that in yellow here um, on the slide. So that rate is currently $3.20 for every thousand, for every 1,000 gallons you use a month. Uh, so if you consider that the average home in the woodlands uses about 10,000 gallons a month, slightly less, uh, depending on the year, but the total amount of that fee then is going to represent about a third of your average home's water and sewer bill. Okay, so about, about 32 bucks a month, which may or may not seem like a lot to you, but consider that without surface water, as I talked about earlier, we can expect further decline in groundwater levels. And as that happens, the water gets progressively more and more expensive to capture. So that money invested now really represents a cost savings in the future for all of us, not to mention ensuring that our kids, our grandkids have a sufficient water supply. Now, if you look at the rate sheet in the lower left, um, you'll see that even though we've added that surface water conversion fee, uh, water service still represents a tremendous value. Uh, we continue to compare very favorably to peer communities in the region, and um, especially given the high-end system that we enjoy. All right, um, <clears throat> I want to say one thing before we move on to Water Smart, which we're going to do in just a second. Uh, I do want to tighten the screws on you just a little bit more. So according to the Region H water plan, conservation has to double by 2050 to meet our needs. So currently, conservation accounts for 8% of our total demand. Or a better way of saying that is we reduce demand by 8% through conservation measures. Left figure needs to jump to 16% in 25 years. It needs to double. Um, so pressure's on. Um, when I say Region H, by the way, so there's 16 regional planning groups, uh, water planning groups in Texas, A through P. We are Region H, uh, which runs from the coast, north through Houston, Montgomery County, up to Leon County. All right, so we looked at our regional system. Uh, we looked at growing demands on that system and um, how the GRP is, is, 
is a major player in that. Um, and you know how Woodlands and Estuary are addressing those demands through the GRP in, in other ways. Um, now I want to look with you at how we work with consumers to reduce water waste and then use water wisely. And so again, one of the best tools we have for that is Water Smart. Um, what is Water Smart? Water Smart is an online portal that you use as a consumer to tap into the new advanced metering infrastructure, AMI. Uh, Woodlands Water, uh, as Paul noted at the beginning, recently finished that installation uh, just last year. We had a few stragglers and we, we finally got it all in. Um, so real quick, AMI is a system that links communications to your digital water meter. So it allows utilities like Woodlands Water to remotely collect customer water usage data in real time. Um, and then it allows you, the customer, to do the same. So you can gather data directly and remotely from your meter. And then it also facilitates direct communication between Woodlands Water and the customer. That way, we can better work with you um, on your questions or issues that you're having with your water consumption. Now, think about it. Before AMI, um, we all had these non-digital meters, right? We, that necessitated um, your water being read monthly by hand by meter readers driving around the streets. Um, and, and the problem with that father's method of meter reading was, was high labor cost, primarily, right? It takes a lot of time to read 34,000 meters by hand every month. Um, those meters were aging. There were a lot of associated with the repair costs with that. And also, as they were aging, we were getting inaccurate readings. Those old meters, um, as they age, would, would often fail, right, or, or fail to capture all the water that was flowing through. So they wouldn't read high, but they would often read low. So in aggregate, we were capturing about 70% of the water that was being consumed. Some meters work better than others, um, which really boils down to unfairness to the customer, because if your neighbor's meter wasn't working so well and yours was, they may not have been paying their full amount while you were. Um, so now we've got accurate readings and um, fairness across the board for all customers. Um, it was also really challenging as a customer to use those old meters to gauge how much water you were using or to identify a leak. And so several years ago, we, we started implementing the AMI system, um, replacing all 34,000 meters. And so now we have meters that are highly accurate highly reliable, um, you know, much reduced operational cost uh, because they automatically uplink. And then um, we can look again remotely at your data as a customer, which means we can then help you address issues like unexpected uh, high water use. Right? And then I think most importantly, um, they let customers look in depth at their own water use right? using Water Smart, so you can better manage it. All right, so here's a look at your new meter. On the left, I do want to point out that water shutoff valve. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I want to point that out because um, understanding what this shutoff valve, where this is and how to operate it, which is just simply a quarter turn one way, you can't really mess it up. It, it can be really important. Um, one, it, you can shut off house your, the water to your house if, uh, if you have an emergency like a big leak. Uh, you can also shut off your water like if you want to drain your pipes for a freeze. Um, now, we do recommend that you shut off your water at your house main. Um, but uh, if for some reason that valve isn't functional or you don't have access to it, um, you can shut it off at the curb. All right, so then moving over to your meter, um, I did pull out a couple symbols on there. I want you to key in on number two there in red, in that red circle, that water spigot icon. That's gonna that's a leak alert. If you see that, your meter is reading consistent use over time. And then number four there, that triangle, that's a high flow warning. You get that, you got a big leak if you're using over 20 gallons per minute for more than 30 minutes. Okay. So even though you have Water Smart, which is a much more convenient and more powerful tool for looking at your water use, it's good to, have, to know about this meter, uh, how to read it as a backup.
That's why I want to show that to you. Okay, um, let's get on to WaterSmart um, in proper. Uh, here's another break from my the voice. The WaterSmart portal is a great area. place to gain. And uh, it's going to give you a nice encapsulation, and then, uh, and then we'll be right back. Gain insights into your water use and your bill. After logging into your WaterSmart portal, you will see information regarding your water use, timely notifications, and links to help you in answering common questions. On the Track tab of the portal, you will be able to critically evaluate your water use history. You can adjust the view of your hourly usage chart to see how your consumption trends change on a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual basis. You can also scroll the chart to see a custom range of usage data. By seeing your data in this way, you will be able to identify some regular patterns related to your water usage. The orange bars on this chart provide insights into the parts of your consumption that are suspected to be leaks. You can view additional information on your leak history on the Leaks tab of your usage chart. If you see a lot of gray bars, something may be interfering with your meter. Email or call Public Works for assistance. On the Overview chart, you can see how you compare to average and efficient homes over a selected period of time. Additionally, see how your consumption has changed in relation to temperature and precipitation and how your household uses water. Complete your household profile or update it to improve the accuracy of this chart. Finally, if you enjoy data as much as we do, you can export your water usage information at any time to do additional analysis on your own. Simply click on the Settings tab, select Download your data, then download either 90 days worth of hourly data or a year's worth of billing data. Thanks, and we hope you enjoy using your All right, well, there we have it. Um, Paul and, uh, and some others let me know that the links that I mentioned were not in the chat box. I just reloaded those. Let me know if you're uh, still not seeing them. And I'll keep working on that. They're on there now, I think, though. Okay, good, sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. All right, so um, let's get into Water Smart. Let's take a tour. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to share a new screen here. Bear with me. Okay, so uh, let's see. Share, here we go. Okay, does everybody see the uh, Woodlands Water homepage there? Um, how are you going to access WaterSmart? The easiest place is just to go to woodlandswater.org, and in the top right corner, you will see WaterSmart. Right. Um, if you have an account, um, you can simply hit login. If you haven't started it yet, all you need is your account number, which you can get off your monthly water bill. That, for whatever reason, is not accessible to you. Just give us a call at Woodlands Water, 855-H20-SAVE, and we'll give it to you right over the phone. So you simply plug that in and then you're in. And you are going to land uh, on something that looks exactly like this uh, that will be tailored, of course, to your home. And uh, first off, there's a couple of ways to navigate here. Uh, you see these tabs up top. You can use those. You can also use these tiles down below. Um, they're basically the same. They're, they're just different routes to the same information. So use whichever method works for your brain. I'm going to use tiles. And I'm going to start with view, pay your bills. Okay, so right here um, you can see an uh, encapsulation of your last three months' bills. And then if we click on view bill, first thing is you can get a rundown of all your billing here. If you want to access that, um, you can pay your bill right here, and then you can evaluate your bill. And I want to drill into this one because this is a pretty powerful tool. So first, you can see a comparison of the previous or the current month's bill to um, previous years. You can also look at um, the last three months of your use. And here, let's uh, click this if you're concerned about your bill. Why is my bill high? Um, do I have a leak? Uh, has there been a change in my consumption pattern? Do I have a high schooler that's all of a sudden uh, loving 45 minute showers? You know, um, you can. Um, you can work through that with this series of prompts that are based off of your personal home profile. 
And I'm going to show you how to create that profile in a minute. Uh, it's really important that you do that because WaterSmart will tailor um, your specific solutions to your specific household. Um, okay, so let's go back. And we're going to scroll down a little bit more. Uh, I'll show you how to set alerts here in a minute. Uh, recommended actions. Those, again, are tailored towards your specific household. Um, and keep scrolling down. This area uh, is um, a projection for how much water your house is expected to use in the month and how much that's going to cost you. And again, you can find some corrective action advice here in this button. Okay. And we're going to go back home. And we're going to go over to my daily use. So now right up top, you can see a year over year comparison. Um, and then you can dig a little deeper with view use. So this is where all that awesome data lives, right? Um, so you can get water consumption by day, week, two week periods, two month periods, year, or specific date range. And if you click on any one of these columns, you can get hour by hour use. Now look at this here, something should jump out to you. Uh, it certainly does to me, which is um, what looks like a leak here. So WaterSmart makes finding a leak really easy by uh, putting it in orange. Uh, but even without that orange, you should be able to tell that something fishy is going on here because we've got continuous water use hour by hour. Um, and especially in the wee hours when nobody's using water, looks like water's still getting used probably a leak, all right? So great tool there. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can uh, look at your, your use in, uh, in context with the season, right? So it tracks temperature and precipitation. So, um, you know, half of our home's water use uh, goes typically in, in, the, in the lawn and landscape. So climate plays a big factor in our overall consumption. So it should get your attention if you're looking at this and you see a period where we've had a lot of precipitation or the temps are really low and you're still using a lot of water. Right? Maybe there's an opportunity there to change your irrigation pattern to reduce your watering, um, which is going to be better for your lawn's health uh, as well as your, your pocketbook. Keep scrolling down and you'll find more ways to compare your water use over time. And then at the very bottom, download your data. Yeah, so here you can geek out. Uh, you can download a CSV file uh, and have all kinds of fun crunching that data in Excel. Now we're gonna move over to, over to I want to. So this is a series of uh, prompts for you. Uh, the first one being sign up for unusual use alerts. So let's, let's drill into that because this is another really important aspect of WaterSmart. So this is going to walk you through a series of alert opportunities. You can set parameters that make sense for your household, right? So high use. What is high use to you? Is it 1.5 times your normal use? Is it three times? Um, you can decide uh, how you want to get your messages, if at all, you know, email, text, voice, all the above. Um, this bill forecast notification, uh, you can get alerts based off a dollar amount versus a water amount. Um, now, unplanned use notification, let's talk about this one. This is a really great tool for when you're out of town. So what you can do is you can set this for zero. And if it exceeds that, you'll get a notice saying, hey, I shut the water off. Uh, I'm out of town, but now there's water running. What's going on? Call your neighbor, have them go over and check it out. Call Woodlands Water. We can kind of turn off your water. Um, you know, or you can set it, maybe you just want to the threshold is going to be just how much it takes to water your landscape, right? Um, anything over that, you'll get an alert for. And here you set the period. So we're going to be gone from June 15th to the end of the month to Italy. And so I'm going to plug those dates in there. It's a really handy tool. Helps you avoid disasters. I've heard lots of stories about folks that um, uh, were saved by this and folks that wish they had been saved by this. So remember that unplanned use notification. And then at the bottom, you can decide how you want to get messages from Woodlands Water specific to your account or, you know, on, based on service interruptions, things like that. All right, going back to I want to, um, here you can sign up for Wise Guy Irrigation Evaluation. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, check if I have a leak. Let's click this one. 
This is a great um, tool that walks you step by step through finding a leak and then also how to deal with that leak, whether it's indoors, fixtures, or outdoors, irrigation or other. Um, there's handy videos, really uh, practical to the point tips on finding and solving leaks. Next one down, uh, understand if I have a high bill. That's, we already looked at that. Um, that's just another route to the evaluate your bill section. Learn why I use, where I use the most water. So that's all the data tracking, all those bar graphs. Um, you can pull up your latest water quality point uh, report here. You can be reminded of your watering schedule, right? What two days you're allowed to water under the DIS. Contact information, applying for rebates on water saving devices. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And, um, and lots of great how-to tips uh, for your lawn and landscape here. And then finally, moving over to recommended actions. So here you'll find 80 actions, uh, water saving tips, along with projected water and cost savings based on your household profile. So here's one, one way to, to uh, create your household profile. It's gonna walk you through a series of questions. I think there's about 20 in there that are gonna narrow down um, specifically what your, what's going on in your household, how many people, um, you know, how many toilets and so forth. And so what that does is it allows WaterSmart to give you tailored solutions with uh, projected water savings and cost savings for your specific household. Lots of great tips here. I recommend you try to go for a perfect score of all 80. Maybe you wanna just start with one or two and work from there. All right, so that is the WaterSmart portal. The next step for you really is just to get in and play with it. That's the best way you're gonna learn, right? Just get to navigate around, but hopefully you've gotten the strong impression of just how easy it is to navigate. Um, and so don't be afraid, get in there, dink around, set your use alerts, examine your water use. I, I think you're gonna learn a lot. And um, let's see, we're gonna go back now to some, um, some other water saving resources for you outside of Water Smart. So rebates, if you're not aware, Woodlands Water offers you up to, up to $150 in rebates for water saving devices. So you can get half back on your purchases of rain barrels, sold by Woodlands Green, by the way, uh, rain sensors, uh, drip irrigation supplies, native plants, smart water controllers. Just send us that receipt and we will put 50% back on your next water bill as a credit. We've got lots of great resources at woodlandswater.org on lawn care tips, native plants, composting, pollinator support, uh, drip irrigation, um, how to winterize your black backflow, how to uh, prevent uh, freeze damage in your house pipes. Tons of really good, useful information there. Wise guys. This is the program I really want you to use if you haven't already. So what we do is for free, we will send certified technicians to your house to examine your irrigation system. They'll go through a top to bottom. They'll look for leaks. They'll tune your sprinkler heads so you're not spraying the driveway. They'll show you how to uh, tune your, um, your controller. I thought I was good with my water control. I didn't realize a lot of the functionality I was missing out on. Uh, they help me with that. The report is three to four pages long. It's very in-depth, very practical, and tailored towards your system, um, and it's free. So take advantage of that. Really good opportunity. And then finally, irrigation recommendations. Uh, I send out a weekly e-blast every Monday morning, and as part of that, I look at evapotranspiration rates, precipitation rates, forecasts, and I tell you how much watering you should do this week. Right, so take the guesswork out of it. Should you water one day, two days, uh, and that way you don't have to you don't have to guess. Make it easy. I also put in some quick hitters, some tips on lawn care, native plants, uh, local happenings. Uh, so sign up for that. You can do that at woodlandswater.org or just scan this QR code. And I think that is it. Um, I invite everyone to to call me with questions, comments. Um, that's what I'm here for is to help you out and, um, 
if I'm not an expert on something, I, I, I'm, I'm able to find those experts and, and get you the help you need. So please, please reach out. And with that, any questions? I want to have you look at chat, see if you have any questions or comments. And I also wanted to take privilege of a quick confessional about the new system. As soon as I got it, it, it was, I signed up and at some point within a few weeks of receiving my, my app, um, I had a message that I should check for leaks in my system. I think the notification part of this is the most awesome part. And I had, uh, my first response was, you know, I don't, I don't do leaks at my house. I mean, I'm a water conservation guy. <laughs> and so I went to uh, look about, of course, there was no big pool of water, but there was almost a pin type leak from, uh, I had the faucet or the hose bib and I was, I had a timer on there. And it was just a stream of water coming out that really didn't even make a pool, but it was certainly a waste of water. So I was able to stop that right away. I've also got a lot of those uh, during, I think it was 103, 104 here in the summer. A lot of those that I had exceeded my average. So I think it's just a horribly useful tool to just uh, the notifications and the awareness, because I've always felt but people typically don't waste water intentionally. And if they're aware of what's going on, that their system is running at night or they water three times a night, uh, that they're gonna stop it. And I think I wanted to mention too, you brought up this about your discussion on aquifers and it was sometime later in my career that you know I've always been for the efficient and effective use of water and the preciousness of it. But it was only a few years ago that I learned about the fact that, and speaking of the Evangeline aquifer that we use, that that water is 10,000 years old. Been there 10,000 years waiting for a lot of people to bring it up to the top and put it on the sidewalk. And so that was a, a stunning discovery for me that it's not only a precious resource, but just think about how long it's been there. And I think one of the conservation messages we have is that uh, there's no water so cheap as that, which we do not use. As you mentioned, Region 8 says we gotta have a lot of conservation going on. If we're not gonna meet our standards and our, and our demand, so critical that we push it even more than we have in the past. Do you have any chat questions? Uh, yeah, Roger wants to know if Water Smart is covered in the Creekside area. So that's North Harris County Water Authority. Is that right, Paul? Um, right. And uh, I don't believe they, they have Water Smart at this point. But uh, I'm glad he asked that question. Yeah, I know they don't. And I think but I also think, like I said it, it, in the beginning, uh, I hope people tune in that don't have it, that they see what the powerful tool that it is, and that they encourage their utility district or whoever is uh, providing their water to give that some thought. Not only is it more efficient and effective and accurate, it's also got all these tools attached and all this on your cell phone. You know, it's, um, it's uh, staggering how much water loss occurs from leaks. We all think, oh, I don't have a leak because, you know, you, you think a leak is a big puddle on your on your floor or a big pond in your yard. Um, but, uh, you know, I had a leak um, and it was significant. I found out about it through WaterSmart. It was in the outdoor line. It was 12 gallons an hour. 12 gallons an hour. I had no idea. That water line is 18 inches below the surface at most. It's not real deep. And, it, and I, I, I'm embarrassed to say it went on for quite a while and, and, um, until I caught it with the water smart and um, had no idea. So point being, don't think you're just going to see it right visually. So right. tune into your water use um, and use those steps, those leak detection steps that water smart gives you. Yeah, and the, and the meters are so accurate. 
that they can detect that leak in your toilet that you may not hear. So, like I said, it to me, they're uh, it's one of the more powerful tools that I've seen as far as making people aware and and having it right there. And not to mention those that like statistics to go look at what you're doing compared to your neighbor, compared to last year, compared to, you know, just again, making yourself aware. If there are not any other chat, I wanted to also uh, notice that we did have some, at least one student ambassador. Um, the Woodlands Green realizes the importance of having youth involved in these processes and um, Ms. Packer and others that have helped us. We're, we're up into the 30s or 40s, I think, but students that are involved in these ideas and concepts and volunteers that uh, are learning about the sustainability and probably may even go into those kind of careers. So we welcome them. I don't have anything else. I don't think, John, unless you have any. I will say that in, um, again, remember Sunday, if you want to come out, have a donut and pick up stuff in the Shadow Bend Park. Also, um, going to our website, there's also invasive species. Kathy Herrick and others have promoted uh, Terry. I think is on the line as well. All those things that um, you can volunteer for and, and do good deeds that help the sustainability of this kind of remarkable place we live. And lastly, on Thursday, March the 23rd at 7 p.m., we're going to have another lecture or discussion. And this one's going to be about it's all you ever wanted to know about electric vehicles. Uh, that's interesting to everybody, no matter what your opinions are. So we'll be sending out shortly an invitation for that and a description of who talks and, and what the talk's going to be about. So I would like to just thank everybody again for coming and, and spread the word about these uh, meters that I know the Woodlands Water is trying to promote it and making powerful effort to do that. But there's nothing like walking to your neighbor and say, did you know? Because sometimes we don't pay attention to some of the things we get. We'll use all the help John, we can get in the word out. John, thanks so much.